Hello, everybody. Boy, oh boy, what a difference perspective makes. When I fish a lake around my home in West Tennessee and I can see my fishing lure in a depth of three feet, well, I feel like I'm fishing clear water. But many of my angling buddies up north think they're fishing a hog hole, <laughs> like two pigs wallowing in a mud hole. To them, anything less than eight to 18 feet of visibility is heavily colored. Well, where I come from, when visibility runs less than three to four inches, you have very off-colored water. Fishing off-colored water like we have in the Mississippi River drainage system isn't unusual to me. I grew up fishing it. I don't just tolerate muddy water. I prefer it sometimes. And let me tell you why. You know, we mistakenly picture bass as creatures at the mercy of their environment. Being a highly successful predator, the bass has learned to adapt and survive in a variety of conditions, including heavily stained water. You know, there are many myths concerning bass behavior in yucky water. And one I hear most often is that when the water clarity darkens, bass cut a trail in search of clear water. Now, this implies that a mass migration swims to the lower section of the lake or to a clear running creek somewhere on the lake. Bass, as a general rule, don't swim a great distance in clear water. They don't move a whole lot when visibility is limited. They move even less. Now, how in the world would a bass in stained water in the upper reaches of the lake know the water was clear five to 10 miles away down the lake? He wouldn't. When the water turns the color of a chocolate milkshake or the color of a bowl of split pea soup, bass have options. They move shallow, making them much easier to catch. One to two feet isn't too shallow in low light water. Another thing they do is become object oriented, meaning they move in very close to objects. They also use all their senses. A bass has to see a lure before striking it. Vision is their primary sense, even in muddy water. But the lateral line, which can detect vibrations over 10 feet away, become more important as visual range is reduced. Bass also use their inner ear to sense sounds produced even further away. And I think smell is extremely important in murky water, so I always use a fish attracting scent. Wow, he's been shallow that. See you, darling. You know, something I've learned over the years is that bass that live in clear water are usually harder to catch when their habitat turns off color than those that live in a stained or murky environment. Bass that are accustomed to clear water feed almost entirely by sight, but bass that are accustomed to, say, this type of an environment a murky environment or a real heavily stained environment seem to rely more on their other senses to cope with the reduced visibility. Normally the best time to fish an off-colored water lake that's usually clear is after conditions have stabilized for three or four days. By then, bass have adapted to reduce visibility and established predictable patterns. Big old fish right there in that shallow water. Woo! Oh, look at that big horse. Mule right there. Big old fish right there. Be easy with him. Now don't jump. Wow, oh, you were trying to. Woo! Look at big fat baby. Woo! I saw his whole back. See ya. Good juke. Here's something I think is pretty important to remember. When visibility is greatly reduced, I normally prefer to use bigger lures, simply because bass can see and catch them much easier. And there's several good ones for this type of condition. A 3 8 to half ounce single bladed black spinnerbait is the best choice. The larger spinnerbait is not only highly visible, but it produces more vibration. 
and its silver blade flash penetrates the off-colored water. It's also best to use a number five Colorado throbbing blade because it alerts the bass through its lateral lines. When using this type lure, it's smart to create a path. Don't just make one cast at your target and move on. Make several, but each time bring your lure at the same slow speed and same direction each time you cast. A bass must first detect the sound of your bait and in which direction it's going and then move in that direction in order to see it. If it's fished too fast, it's going to be out of his range of vision before he can locate it. And if you make only one cast here and another one six feet away, all you're doing is confusing the fish and making him wonder what it is, where it is, and not catching it. It's also smart to tip your spinnerbait with an attractor. This not only adds more buoyancy so it can be fished slower, but it also creates a bigger image. Another good lure to use when bass are active would be a larger shallow running crankbait. A square lift version can be mighty deadly in dark water. Now when fishing one, use one that has rattles built in for additional sound. The crankbait, like the spinnerbait, must be fished slow and making several casts to the same spot is very important. Now another advantage to using these two lures is the vast amount of water you can cover with them quickly. If you're still into catching fish, something else that's pretty important, maybe you want to change the lure styles or sizes. Even lures of the same kind often produce different vibrations. He was in that spot, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Woo! Whoa. Cut up there. Jump like a small mouth. Ah, it's strong. Get it, 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 get it. All right. I'm not going to keep you. Oh, I'm going to show you something. Look at that. Get that little short. Look at that. How short that little. That's what fertile water will do to do to him. But he's not 17 inches long. Look how fat he is. <laughs> Look at that little thing. Aren't you something? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Another interesting fact I've found about fishing off-colored water is that I have my better luck fishing on sunny days during the brightest part of the day, say from around 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. When you've got cloud cover and muddy water combined, it reduces light penetration. So wait if possible and plan your day for the sun. A cloudy day is the best day for clear water. What are you doing, man? Come here. Easy now. Come up to me. There we go. Woo! Look look how short those things are. You can, 18 inches or less. That's where they get all their strength. They turn that little body sideways and go. Like a big bluegill. Toodaloo, boo boo. Let me tell you, bass in warm stained water will almost always be positioned shallow, and depth is the first consideration a good fisherman concentrates on when trying to locate fish. If I had to pick the most important thing about fishing yucky water, it would be to fish one to two feet of water. Okay, remember that, that's real important. Now let's get back to the lake and I'll show you more about what I'm talking about. Coming out, coming out, look here. Look at that crazy thing. Wow! Where's that? Boy, he got his... Oh. 
<laughs> what are you doing? Boy, he hit that thing and he would cut out like a late freight. You don't like it, I know it, but you don't have to. You can see that. I don't like that bait in my face. Okay, okay, I'll get it out of there. You just calm down. You just, all right. Just calm down. Boy, did you see how fast he can? You are all right. You know that? Yes, you are. He hit that thing and went from there to there before you could say, stop it. You know, I'll tell any bass fisherman, if you like shallow water fishing, you're gonna love staying water. There are many advantages. For instance, there are more fish accessible on shallow water. These conditions keep the fish up near the surface. You don't have a lot of baits to worry about. Bass are less spooky and scattered more and relate to most shallow water objects, such as stumps, logs, treetops, bushes, and so forth, and they're much easier to locate and catch. Let me just get my hands, oh, gotcha. Whoa, what a big bass. Whoa, what a, I'll tell you, a big fat fish right there. Maybe you are something else. Big gutted fish. There's no doubt in the eyes and the minds of many anglers, off color conditions create a major negative. So don't let that happen. A better approach would be to turn that negative into a positive. Spring clear water is beautiful, but stained water bass are far more predictable. And to an old Tennessee boy like me, that makes yuck mighty beautiful. So the next time you pull up to the water's edge and see the lake brown as chocolate milk or green as split pea soup, remember some of the things we've discussed and give it a shot. You might just be pleasantly surprised. We'll see you next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.